Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about the Surrey ST124 and ST125. This is series new tripod. It's a waterproof tripod. It is made of carbon fiber and it only weighs a kilo 20 without the head, which is super, super light. You've got the 124 and 125. The 125 has five legs section and the 124 has four legs, just like the Traveler 7C. Only has four legs, much quicker, to set up. Both tripod cost the same, $250 without the head and $340 with the head. Let's go over the specs quickly. So like I said, the 124 has four section legs versus five section for the 125. And the 124 measures 48 centimeters when it's folded down versus 420 for the 125. But the 124 can go up to a meter 58 in height versus a meter 50 for the five section leg. So the 124 is six centimeters smaller when retracted all the way, but eight centimeters shorter when it is at maximum height. But amazingly enough, they do weigh the same. So you just have to decide whether you want something more compact or something that goes higher and is quicker to set up. And the tripod head ST10 weighs 370 grams and can hold up to 30 kilos. And to give you an idea of the size difference, I'll show them side by side next to the Traveler 7C that I've reviewed before. And those six centimeters less on the 124 versus the 125 makes quite a big difference when folded down. And it's why I went with the 124. Unfortunately, I did not have the two together at the same time, but it should give you an idea of the size difference. The 125 is almost as short as when the Traveler 7C is folded down. The cool feature with this tripod is the fact that the center column is a triangular shape so when you close it it actually takes a lot less space than if you had a circular one just like this one you can see the difference this is the traveler 7c which i love both are amazing the one is much more compact and not much lighter i think 100 grams lighter and you can see that this one is folded back but once you unfold it and close it it is much bigger than the 124 and this is what the st124 looks like next to the Traveler 7C when open all the way up. And I really don't give this tripod's height justice because I'm at six foot five or 195 centimeters. And here is my flex test. I like doing that just to measure how strong the tripod will be, how sturdy it will be. And I'm using quite a lot of strength to bend those legs. And I'm really happy with either tripods. And obviously the 124, which has less sections, will be sturdier. And also because the legs are thicker than the 125. And to compare it also to the AM225, this is how small it is. So it is a bit bigger than the 125 and a bit thicker. It's kind of like the big brother, but this one has a center column, this one doesn't. It comes with a really cool head, it's the ST10, and it really, really is quite amazing and is compact. It's not as tall as usual heads, and it has kind of a lot of features. But the main part is this knob here. You know how I always complain about this knob being way too hard to tighten because it was too smooth? Well, this is what they did here. So it's much easier to, to get a grip, to get a hold of it. And you can also control the friction with this little knob inside, which is pretty cool if you have heavy, heavy cameras and you don't want them to drop right away when you open it up. And you also have a knob here that actually makes this top head turn and this knob can be pulled out and repositioned very easily you got three bubble lever here and on this side here which is pretty cool if you need that you've got two screw ports a one quarter inch and also a three eighth inch and this is pretty cool if you want to hook up accessories on the side as well and obviously this is a waterproof tripod which is really dope you can see here when you open it up, it's got those O-rings, which makes it waterproof. You can go in salt water, but you have to rinse it off right away afterwards. That's what Surrey told me. Then here, you've got the similar knobs that you can lock, you can keep open. And once you're happy with the position, you can press it down and they'll lock like that. Really dope. The center column is very sturdy. I actually really like the way it grips and obviously it cannot rotate because it is triangular. And you also have two screws that you can tighten and it will lock the head in place, which is really cool. And there's a nice little rubbery surface also at the bottom of the head. 
A really cool feature is the feet. You can now twist them and turn them into spikes. If you're shooting on grass and really want a nice grip, you can do that. And which means also that you will not lose them because they just won't come off, which is really, really nice. If you have a nice little hook here made of metal that you should use, definitely should use because this is such a light tripod. If you want something very sturdy, if it's windy, then you can hook something up and it really is nice and super tight. You can also twist it off to flip the, the tripod head down if you want to do any macro shots as well, but it is there to stay. It's definitely not coming off easily. In fact, I can't open it up anymore because I did twist it really hard. You can see the size difference now that this one is unfolded. It is so much higher here. I mean, this, this whole setup here is really tall, whereas this one, they managed to keep everything super compact. And this is why it takes so little space while being unfolded, not in the folded position. And I really like that style because you don't have to unfold it. It is a much quicker setup than this one. Now that the quick review is done, let's talk more about it. What I like, what I love, and what I think could be improved. And at first I didn't understand why you would need this head to twist on the top rather than just moving everything here like that. But once I really understood it, um, it didn't make sense, let's say. Because um, if I'm in an angle like that and I want to make fine adjustments, I've realized that I'm actually you know, too low or too high rather than untwisting this and causing it to maybe lower or, or raise, well, all you have to do now is untwist this one and then you can fine tune it like that. Pretty dope, pretty awesome. And once you're happy with it, tighten it and that's it. Won't move anywhere. So yeah, overall, I'm really, really happy with this tripod. It, it does feel really nice. I do wish that it, it was padded a bit because in winter it is really cold. I like the fact that this one has two, um, two sleeves on its leg. In fact, if it's the same size, I might switch them around. If you live in countries where it gets really cold, it is not pleasant to hold this thing, even though carbon fiber I feel like is not as cold as uh, metal or aluminum, but it's still pretty cold. So I wish that they had that. My good friend Serge Ramelli actually took my uh, Traveler 7C because he loved it. Serge loved his tripod to be light and with only four section legs. So the Traveler 7C was the perfect match for him. But he texted me the other day, he's like, hey, I ruined it. I brought it in salt water. I need something that can actually go in the water and is a bit lighter. And I was like, well, hold on. I've got just a tripod for you. Fortunately, it's not available yet, so he's gonna have to wait a tiny bit. I know he's gonna buy the 124 once it's available because it is really hard to find um, a tripod that is super light, waterproof, and not super expensive. So check out the link in the description so you can pre-order it. Um, definitely, definitely a killer tripod. Now let's talk about what could be improved with this ST124 and the 125. And I can compare it to the Traveler 7C, which I loved, but in the end, it was a bit thick, and also the way it unfolds takes much longer to deploy than the ST124 or 125. And all these imperfections are totally gone with this ST124 and ST125. It is that much better of a tripod to me. Now the question is, is it worth $330 versus $130 for the Traveler 7C? To me it is, all these added bonuses and waterproofing makes it that much better. It is really, really hard to find anything wrong with it other than maybe the price because it isn't as cheap as the Traveler 7C, obviously, but it is a whole different tripod. It is that much smaller. It can go in the water. It unfolds much faster and all that added really makes a huge difference. All right, but now what could be improved? Like I said, the only thing that really bothers me a bit is the, the number of knobs that you have on the head, but you might be able to order it without the head because I know a lot of people want to use their own heads. Uh, Serge Ramelli likes his um, really good tripod, really good, I forgot the brand, but very expensive ones, but he loves them. So whenever he gets a new tripod, no matter the brand, he puts his head on it. But don't get me wrong, the ST10 head is actually very, very impressive and it can hold up to 30 kilo, which is massive for such a small tripod head. So 
awesome head, I just like when they're simpler. One thing that I find annoying as well is you cannot switch plate heads from one to another. You see this one is flat and this one has little uh, screws in it so it actually stops from falling off. But it is a bit annoying because I, I want to have just one single plate and then be able to put it on different tripods. So yeah, a bit annoying. It doesn't matter on this one because it's such a small plate head that this actually sticks out on both sides. But on the Traveler 7C, because it has no holes in it, it actually cannot fit. And um, yeah, it's a bit annoying. I wish it was more consistent. I'm sure from now on, they'll even out their whole uh, tripod system. And uh, But for now on, it, it is a bit annoying. So I use the old one on this um, tripod head, but it doesn't have, you know, it doesn't have the safety, safety pin in it, unfortunately. So yeah, a bit annoying. But this plate, I don't know if you can see it here, has little red, I'm gonna call them knobs, and I didn't know what they were used for, but it actually is pretty cool, pretty smart. You can stick them out and push your camera against it so it doesn't move around, doesn't rotate. And to be fully transparent, I received the ST124 first. It had a problem where I couldn't twist it and keep it in place. It, it, it kept moving back and forth, but it turned out it was just a defect. I, I received the 125 afterwards because that's the one I actually wanted. And it is super, super, super sturdy. I cannot move it at all. It is very, very sturdy. Even when I extend it all the way up, it is super, super sturdy. And I don't have to twist it super, super hard as well. So really, really nice. I cannot complain with that. So make sure that yours doesn't have that defect. And unfortunately, one of the rubber gasket here um, broke with my model. I don't know how I did it. I might have messed it up, but uh, they're gonna send me replacement ones. And I wish that they would actually send replacement uh, rubber gaskets for uh, this tripod because it's super important for the waterproofness to keep them in good shape and replace them in case one breaks, which it can, obviously, they're rubber gaskets. So for this tripod, I would definitely give it a nine out of 10. So now you just have to decide whether you're gonna get the ST125 or ST124. Every water loving people out there, you need to get a waterproof tripod and this is a killer deal, no doubt. And to show you how small it is compared to the Traveler 7C, here's what it looks like when put into the Vinta, which has a very, very tiny side pocket for the tripod. And when the Traveler 7C is unfolded, it fits fine. But you see when it is fully folded, it really is hard to, well, to stick it in it without forcing it. It really is that much thicker than the ST125. So placing it in bags, whether it's inside a bag or outside, will be much easier with this new tripod. And here they all are next to each other. The AM125 being the much smaller one, but without the center column, than the ST125 and the Traveler 7C. So now the real question is, should you get the Traveler 7C or the ST124 or 125? And I think there's no right answer. If you're on a budget and still want something light and strong, the 7C will be a great choice. But if you have the extra cash and want something lighter, smaller and waterproof, then this is pretty much your only choice. I love how compact it is. It is now my go-to tripod, and this one is staying at home at the studio to do my recording and stuff like that. But it doesn't mean that it's a bad tripod, it just means that this one is that much smaller, better, lighter, stronger. Maybe not stronger. I still think this one, because it is much thicker, um, I think it is a bit sturdier, uh, especially in, in bad weather, but this one is still very strong, very sturdy for such a compact set up. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoy this video and uh, let me know if you do like this new format. I'm shooting very wide angle so I'm more talking in your face uh, rather than having a longer focal length. Uh, let me know if you like this setup. Also have my two neons on each side. I think it's pretty cool. It's just it adds a bit more spice to it I guess and yeah subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Hit the like button it really does help and let me know in the comments below if you think there's a better tripod that is waterproof than the Surrey 125 
or 124. Thank you guys for listening and I hope you enjoyed this review. I made it as honest as possible like I always do. This was sent to me for free by Surrey, but I told them, like I tell everyone, that this will be an honest review if I have to make one. And if you want a discount, you can use this promo code. It will get you 10% off, I think, or maybe five. You'll see. But it should get you some dollars off any tripod from Surrey. And I'll leave you with the sexy test. All right, so this is the sexy test. I've asked my neighbor. She doesn't know what she's doing here. But I'm going to ask her to choose which one is the sexiest of them three. I'll give you a few seconds to look at them, to touch them, and uh, let me know which one you think is the nicest. The and nicest the one, yeah. And the sexiest. <laughs> well, from a quick uh, look over the three of them, I would say this one, because it seems to me like it's the lightest and the more compact, the most compact. Yeah, but we want sexy, we don't want compact. <laughs> We well, it, we I like the, well, if I go into details, I like the striped designs on the, on the pods. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then the, the light blue touch here. I don't which, know if you can see. Which this one has too. It has, it does. Um, but it's more, it feels more robust and more um, hard, you know. I, I think I like this one because, you know, the grips and it looks more stable and once it's deployed fully, it, it really gives you, I think, stability, which is what you're looking for in a tripod. And so you can, you know, in, when it's windy and stuff, you can uh, really, really go for it and have a, a good image. Interesting. All I'm asking is, which one is sexier? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, I guess between the two. Um, between the three. Yeah, no, this one's not sexy at all, like, really not. It's all black, it's really massive, and it's not, not wow. a good look. Wow. So not that one. Wow. Um, between the two... Which one do you think is more expensive? Well, it's silly, but I, I would go with this one, the bigger one. Failed. Yeah. Smaller is better. <laughs> well, this was my says? first option. What is the Apple? No, no, less is more. That's what I meant. Less is more. Less is more. That's yeah. A, okay, interesting. Interesting. So you like the stripes like that. Um, all right. Yeah, I feel like this one is way sexier though. But, I think uh, it's like too fancy for a tripod. Ooh. Yeah. Too fancy for a tripod. I did not know that something could be too fancy for a tripod. By the way, she has the mic, so my voice can might be off. But um, yeah, thank you, neighbor. And um, sure, anytime.